Okay, so I, I want to take you back to the very beginning of your career. All right, that's a that's a long, long, at, long, long, long way. At what age did you decide that you wanted to be an actor? Well, I seen a big bright light. I got a slap on the bum, and then I realized I want to be an actor. Okay, and um, where where are you from originally? I hear your accent. I'm from North Wales in the UK. Okay. I'm a, I'm a Welshie, um, and. Uh, I still live there. I, lo I love North Wales. I love Real, where I live, and I love the families there and all the surrounding towns. And they give me nothing but love, and I try and give it back as much as I can. Okay, um, and we're, we're still at the beginning of your career here. What was your first major role? My first role I landed was Harry Potter and the Prison of Azkaban. I was the werewolf in Azkaban. Okay, and with, and with the role like that, was the nerves on? Like, were you very nervous walking onto a big set for the first time? Was it? I was, a, I was a professional fighter, a professional kickboxer. Okay. Right? One of the best in the world. And then I went to pro boxing. I was a kid that knew nothing about acting. I was dyslexic. I couldn't read or write. So when I landed the role of, of Harry Potter, the werewolf, I was fighting in the boxing ring a couple of weeks before. So I was just the kid on the set going, Woohoo! The movies, you know what I mean. So I didn't come from no back background of acting. I didn't okay. come from no drama school. So I was different. I was a different kid on set. So I was just messing about a bit. You know what I mean, I wasn't taking it dead serious. But then I realised, you know, I, I was taking it serious, but I was still having a giggle at the same time. I was getting told off for giving Daniel and Rupert and Amani kickboxing lessons on set. You know what I mean? When they were 14 years old, in a good way, they were telling me off. It was a bit of fun for the kids. But yeah, but they're all grown up now, so it's great. And you say, all right, you come from kickboxing? Professional kickboxing and professional boxing. Professional kickboxing and professional boxing. How did you make such a lane shift to end up acting from a professional career as an athlete? Well, do you want me to tell you a little secret? Yes, I, I definitely want to hear right. the secret. I followed, I followed my dreams, right? Okay. I listened to my thoughts. I call them my, my gods, right? Okay. They talk to me, right? And um, <coughs> when I was a kid, like I say, I couldn't read or write 10 years ago. Uh, I've come a long way with my dyslexia. Now I'm holding me home with the A-lists. Uh, I just played Darth Vader, man. So, it's, it's, uh, you know, you, I had a lot of dialogue on set as well. So, you know, we got it done. The character came for me, blah, blah, blah. So when I, um, when I wanted, to, I've always wanted to be in the films when I was a kid. Okay. I, I always used to say, what am I gonna be? People used to say, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said, I want to be a movie star. No, I want to be a stuntman. I want to jump in. I want to be this, I want to be that. But when you've got nobody in the family that's not in the industry at the time, you know, people wouldn't take you serious. You know, they just looked at Spen. You know, they probably thought, you can't even read or write. How are you going to be an actor? You know? But I followed my dreams. I was very passionate about that. And uh, I thought to myself, how am I going to get into the industry? And then, my thoughts come to my head saying, right, you're going to be a kickboxer, you're going to get into your boxing, you're going to be one of the best in the world, and there'll be a guy in the audience going, hey, want to be in a movie? The guy wasn't there with a the fat cigar, want to be in the movies, but when I become the Welsh British European kickboxing champion, that opened a doorway for me in the, with a sports agency that people put, they put actors in the films, and then later on down the line I got a proper acting agent. So that's how it started for me. And with that type of start, I heard you say, you know, you really were a self-starter, correct? Yeah. Being, so. being a self-starter, did that help you in the long run when you look at where you're at right now and how you're still progressing as an actor? Yeah, of course. Every, you know, I've done every job out there before I landed my big dream. You know what I mean? So I take every job I've been, I was a doorman for 25 years which will never change anything because I've made good family, good friends from every job I've done, you know what I mean? And I'll never, ne ne never change anything in what I've done in my world because I've done good things. I've been on the building sites, I've been working in the bars and everywhere and I've took a little bit of a, a piece of a jigsaw with my puzzle, a piece of the jigsaw to put my picture together, right? And I've, every part of my path, every day I've used something from somewhere, you know? And with all my characters I've played, I've picked up on different presences and they all come together and they bring all these characters and they work through me so yeah man i'm, uh, I'm living it well my last question is what advice would you give to the next up and coming actor who would love to be in your position one day right okay if you want to be an actor and you want to follow your dreams 
you've got to do this, it's great, but you must have a normal job because it's going to feed the, your dreams, right? So when you get a normal job, put money aside, but don't just think, right, I'm going to be an actor and then just live off the parents so they keep on fueling your dream. No, 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 it doesn't work like that because you've got to have life skills, you've got to pick up life. Well, look, life's journey will help you with your dreams, right? So, but you've got to get thick skinned because when you get signed up with an agent, well, you might not get signed up with an agent. You might, might just go to an open audition or something like that and you might queue up all day. And you know what? When you do this doing day in, day out and you keep on doing it, there's a greater force at play, right? There's somebody else looking down at you. If you work hard enough for it, and you're most passionate about it, don't hurt anybody along the way, just be nice, right? Stay away from the negative and go to the positive. You'll get rewarded and you'll be allowed to live your dreams. Trust me, I'm a, I'm a living profit of it. Do you know what I mean? Not profit, but I'm living proof, right? So you, you've got to get thick skins. When, when, you, when you knock on the doors, sometimes they don't open. Don't get too upset, think, okay, move on to the next door and then keep on knocking. Then one door will open and then they will listen to you. You might not get the job, but the casting agents, they've got really good memories. And they might think of you a year later and go, I remember that kid who came in here, like one of the big smiles, he was really friendly. He wasn't right for the part, but wasn't he nice? That's all I can give you. Just, I'm just, you know, it's good to get to acting college. I didn't do that way, but I've been, you know, I've been very lucky as well, you know what I mean? But it's very good, you've got to, if you, if you can't afford to go to drama school and things like that, go to some, some little drama classes. Save your pennies up, the job that you get. Just, just, um, just be really passionate, but don't want it too much because you become across too desperate. So let it happen, but you've got to put the work in, right? Good luck.